Uyghur people in Xinjiang, which is in western China, are using a secret code to show the true horrors that they face under the Chinese government's surveillance state. In 2018, one of the children and her husband was taken away from her. And in 2021, the emoji with the sunglasses symbolizes a Communist Party official that was assigned to take her husband and child's place to live with and monitor the woman and her child. You probably know about the genocide in western China at this point. Xinjiang, or as the local Uyghurs call it, East Turkestan, are being stripped of all cultural identity, separated from their families, forced to have abortions, forced into sterilization, banned from having passports to be able to leave China, their places of worship demolished, forced to worship the leader, Xi Jinping, the dictator of China, instead of their own religious beliefs. They're forced to live with Han Chinese people, which is the majority ethnic group in China, because the Chinese government thinks that Uyghur people are less cultured or refined and need to be corrected by the Han Chinese majority. To rid them of their savage ways, Uyghur women are forced to marry Han men. And they're forced into unpaid labor. The list could go on and on. But why is China doing this? After all, Xinjiang is China's territory, isn't it? It's because the Chinese government, or the CCP, the Communist Party of China, is a Han-majority ethno-state that suppresses minorities. Don't get confused with American identity politics. We're talking about a country that is over 90% of one ethnic group. And what they say goes. They can try to pretend like there's 56 dancing, happy ethnic minorities, but in fact, they're nothing more than a novelty for Han Chinese entertainment. China likes to keep up a facade of naming certain provinces autonomous regions, but what that actually means is that those regions are in fact so not autonomous that they're under twice as much, if not more, surveillance than a normal Han population province. You see, the Chinese government doesn't like when cultures are different to the majority Han culture. So they oppress different people groups with the utmost brutality. It truly baffles me that people that adhere to principles of socialism or look at China as a shining example of a beacon of socialism would actually celebrate China's treatment of minorities. If you're the kind of person who believes in equality for everyone, you shouldn't look at China as the example of a successful country. It's a racist, brutal ethno-state. The Uyghur people in Western China happen to be the most different from what you'd consider a normal Chinese person. What with their own culture, language, and religion. So China feels the need to restrain them in every way possible. It's a modern day genocide in 2021, and China's getting away with it. China has the tightest control over this area of the country than any place in the entire world. It's very similar to North Korean surveillance, but with much more money and much more technology. We don't have the thousands of refugees that we see from other countries because China is not Syria. It can keep people's mouths shut, monitor them, and keep them inside of the borders of China, and then corrals them into concentration camps if there's any suspicion of them breaking the rules. And what are the rules? Pretty much just existing. Yes, there's tribunals. Yes, it's in the media. But what can we actually do to stop China? It seems like most people actually want to just keep buying cheap crap on Amazon. Some people read a sad headline and then they move on and go about their day. And that's the way the world works. But you have to understand that these people in Xinjiang they have no options left. There's no platform for their voices. China censors everything. It's already bad enough to be a Chinese citizen behind the Great Firewall of China and to be blocked from the rest of the internet, but especially if you're a Uyghur person in Xinjiang. You see, it's a crime of second-degree terrorism simply for a Uyghur to use a VPN to post something on the internet. So these people are using their last ditch effort to tell their stories, and that's truly brave. Uyghur people 
have come up with a fascinating, albeit heartbreaking way, to tell their stories of their families being broken up and taken away to the concentration camps. They can't use their voice or video to post anything that tells the truth about what happens as they will be imprisoned, disappeared, or worse. So they've resorted to using cryptic emojis that tell the timeline of when their wives, husbands, and most disturbing, their children have been taken away from them. Let this be a tiny glimpse into what Amnesty calls a dystopian hellscape in Xinjiang. In this one, we can see that in 2015, she obviously fell in love. 2016, they had their first child. And then from 2017 to 2021, that man is no longer in the picture. In this case, we see this family uh, married in 2012, they have their first child, and then separated in 2016 and 2017, only to be reunited in 2018 through 2020, uh, as he was probably released from the camps. However, in 2021, from my sources, my weaker sources that I asked, the hospital emoji actually means the concentration camp. In this situation, the two people fall in love and have a child, but this time it is the woman that is taken away to the camps, leaving the man to take care of the son alone. You can see the progression of the tragedies here. Fall in love, have a happy family from 2016 to 2018, and then each year, 2019, 2020, 2021, she's alone with her daughter. This woman fell in love in 2014, had a happy family in 2015, 2016, and then from 2017, she was alone raising the children by herself while her husband was taken away. This one we can see the woman falls in love in 2013. They have a boy and then two boys, and then the husband is taken away and she has to take care of the two boys. Then they're reunited back in 2020 with the father, and then in 2021, Everyone is separated completely. This young lady was married in 2011. They had two children by 2015, but still in 2021, her husband has been removed from the family, most likely in a concentration camp. This one is particularly disturbing. This woman is married in 2015. They have a daughter and they have a daughter and son. And then the husband is removed from the picture but so is the daughter in 2019. I don't know what this symbol means in 2020, but it ultimately ends in heartbreak and I can only imagine what happened. In this cryptic emoji message, we can see that she was married in 2010 and eventually had a child and was pregnant in 2016 with another child where they now in 2017 had two children. In 2018, one of the children and her husband was taken away from her. And in 2021, the emoji with the sunglasses symbolizes a Communist Party official that was assigned to take her husband and child's place to live with and monitor the woman and her child. This young lady was married in 2013 and ended up having two boys. But again, I don't know what it is about 2017. The husband was removed from the picture and is most likely, again, in a concentration camp. Marriage in 2014, and then from 2016 to 2021, and it's just her alone with her two kids, husband removed, and the caption says, Walela, which means I'm tired. Although they've cracked down and censored these emoji videos because the Chinese government doesn't want these to get out to the general public, the Chinese government doesn't want people to know what is happening in this very last ditch attempt effort to try to get some information out there, to try to get the world to pay attention. These women put it all on the line. And despite them being censored for doing so, that hasn't stopped new trends from happening, which is now where women are just crying in front of photos of men in their lives that have been taken away, whether it be their fathers or uncles, brothers, relatives. People that they love have been removed and put into camps. This is desperation. 
These Uyghur women have no platform, no voice, no opportunity to share actually what happened because of China's brutal authoritarian regime and the surveillance that it's created. So all they can do is show you their tears in front of their lost loved ones. It's absolutely heartbreaking to see these kind of messages in a bottle, so to speak, going out there only to fall mostly on deaf ears. It's the least we can do to try to spread their message and give them a little bit of hope that maybe at some point things will get better and the Chinese government will be brought to justice. I know it's hard to care about something so far away, but just imagine if your family was taken from you because of a maniacal dictator hell-bent on ultimate control and power. How would you feel? <laughs>